Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we are extremely happy that you could join us again <clears throat> for the second season now of the Inspire uh, seminar series. As you know, the Inspire project is hosted at the Peace Research Institute in uh, Oslo, um, and it is a project that uh, studies uh, inspiration of art, artists, who work in very difficult uh, circumstances um, in oppressive regime, under oppressive regimes, political violence, war, exile, and address these type of themes in their creative practice. Um, uh, so we are starting today with a seminar uh, with a very prominent, uh, incredibly inspiring, uh, beautiful and full of uh, uh, incredible energy, uh, Chu Wai. Uh, from Myanmar, who is now based in uh, Paris. Um, uh, and we have a great pleasure of having Martin Nielsen, who is this researcher at uh, at Prio and, uh, and, and taking also part in the INSPIRE project. And she looks at uh, uh, um, activism and crit uh, creative practice of artists uh, uh, in the context of the current uh, uh, conflict, civil war in uh, Myanmar. Um, and has worked on issues related to to the region Thailand, Myanmar for for a for a long time in her career. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Marte to introduce uh, Chu. Uh, I just wanted to mention that the uh, seminar is being recorded, so um, uh, it will be also available on our website uh, later on, as usual. Also, uh, look up for the next seminar that will come up in October. Uh, Eva, who is moderating today the discussion, will introduce the title at the end of the uh, seminar today. And every month we're going to meet either online or in a hybrid version uh, in Oslo and online uh, with you uh, for this semester to bring uh, inspiring, uh, creative um, and very courageous uh, artists who engage uh, with such important uh, topics. So I hand over to Marte and to Chu. Enjoy the seminar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kasia, for this kind introduction um, and welcome to the seminar. Uh, I have really been looking forward to to the seminar with uh, Chu, who is a f fascinating artist, and I love her paintings with those really beautiful colors and but also the subtle and and powerful symbolism that is is really um, typical for her work. So as Kasia mentioned, Chu is a young and promising artist from Myanmar who combines classical uh, Burmese fine arts with a modern approach uh, and also with a political uh, message. And she was uh, involved in the protest against the coup in Myanmar in February 2021 and had to flee the country due to her activism and is now living in exile and continue the struggle from Europe. While the situation uh, in Myanmar is getting more desperate by the day. Um, and in this seminar, Chu will be taking us through her artistic and personal journey and the different stages of her journey and her country's unfortunate journey. Uh, and she will give us insight into the meaning and the depth of her artwork. Uh, she will present her work for about uh, 20, 25 minutes. And after that, we will open up for questions and reflections from the audience. Uh, and I see here we have many, many very important and uh, capable people who have uh, can bring a lot of insights on this topic as well. So uh, when she's done with her presentation, you can post your question and comments in the chat function, or you can uh, ask directly by raising your virtual little yellow hand and Eva will organize all this. Um, and we'll have lots of time to discuss Chu's work and also art and politics and activism in, in Myanmar. Um, I will then, without further ado, give the word to you, Chu, uh, and you can um, go through the your presentation with us. So, Chu, please. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Inspire, for organizing this event and also for joining this event and giving your time, all our guests. Um, first, I would love to say thank you. So today we chose the title of this event 
is like um, an artist with baggage. So we chose a baggage because it has a, a two meaning. Um, a baggage is something we use to travel and also it has a meaning that we carry our burden or our experience from the past. So I think the baggage is a beautiful word to describe. And as you see, a lot of my experience were on the streets. So a baggage and moving around on the street and outdoor space is really connected and is really reflect to my life. So I we together chose this name with Mati and it's a beautiful name. So that is the, the message behind the title. So if I have to continue, we will, I will start talk about shortly my early, li early life. Um, so we will, we can move the slides. Yes, my early life. Uh, I was born and raised in Myanmar, and I was born in a really a small city in Shan State. And I took the university and my education. I took the education in a bigger city. So all my life. I have the, I always have the perspective of uh, comparing this uh, two different diamond, um, two different uh, uh, social attitudes from the two different backgrounds and it's not the same at all. So this really reflect a lot on my painting also. And the earlier life I I just since I was remember I just left to paint and make a drawing and a lot of my childhood I spent drawing so that's why um, that's why I learned to paint but the beginning I paint as usual and I came from the middle class uh, background family and uh, from a small town and very conservative uh, society of conservative family. So what I paint is a beautiful landscape and a beautiful background. So this is where I have started. But when I was 18, uh, one moment had changed in my life. Um, I will name it as a um, uh, baggage number one. So at this moment, from this baggage number one, I started to paint about the the women's situation and the and the life of women in Myanmar. So the baggage number one is the sexual harassment on the street that I experienced um, when I was with my younger sister in Mandalay in the 9.30 in the morning. And one, came, uh, one man came and groped my sister and we have uh, accidents and crying and with the, with the, with the speed up motorbike and chase up and hit the guy and we catch him and ask people around us to, for the help and explain the situation. And seeing this traumatized moment, I started to interested in the daily life of women in Myanmar because when this sexual harassment happened to me, I thought it only happened to me and my sister because we were unlucky. But when I met my friends at the university, when we talk about it, uh, they also have a similar story and no one talked about it. And I was shocked. And it wasn't only us, it's a lot of us are happening. So seeing that moment, I asked a friend, I asked a friend, have you ever experienced sexual harassment on the streets or different story, but the, the same meaning, the background. So, and I, at this time, all I want to do is paint. So I decided to paint a, a women's situation through the painting and to talk about this. So the main reason behind my painting is like I really, uh, inspire and love a strong women who know their value and who is proud of their existence. So I made this kind of women. And another part of the painting is I give to the audience to give the message to speak up. So and in our society, we were taught by the women have to be shy and quiet. And even my mom, my teacher, they told me if something happened to us, this kind of sexual harassment, try to neglect it and it's well, it's well finished. But it's really, it's never finished. It's existing every day. So through my painting, I gave this message. These are my earlier life. And um, a lot of years I was focusing 
on on this creation to how can I explain more about the women's situation and I want deeper and deeper and without knowing the feminism before and I read the book and I was um, going deeper and deeper to this part. So there was my earlier life before the the military coup. Um, and during that time, what I found is the another message is that I found is uh, I have to introduce a little bit with the the history and culture uh, is the is about the fabric and clothes in Myanmar. Even the fabric and clothes they doesn't have their right and uh, the other female rights equality. These are maybe another thing to talk about. And also in Myanmar, the women since we are born, we were um, um, we were born with a guilt. I mean, we were born as a second second sex, and I remember that because till eighteen year old, before the sexual harassment on the streets, I was very conservative girl, and I. I was believed in, I accept all these idea of what my grandma told me, what the society told me, and I really try so hard to be a good girl and to be a shy girl. But and one day I found out when I was making a women, uh, a women uh, a painting and I found even the clothes doesn't have the rights. Because in Myanmar, we cannot watch the SI list there. Um, we cannot put together a man clothes and women clothes together in the washing machines. And also we cannot, the men, they really believe when they touch it or when they walk under this, um, a lot of their glories and goodness, their charmings will go down. And because they treat a women's skirt and women, uh, especially the bottom part, like a lingerie, a long skirt, sarong, they, a lot of, including men and also a women's 99% of the family, they really believe these are a dirty thing and bring you a bad luck. So, um, so we were born with the guilt, um, guilt, guilt, sorry for my English, uh, born with the guilt and, 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 and I was uh, digging why is happening right now, why that we are feeling right now, why we all uh, the whole societies we're feeling and this gave me really to dig deeper and deeper because it's not happening right now just because of someone she created in this current time just because of the history in the past and the story the, uh, the what happened to the past is really connected it's really um, it's really a link to what is happening right now so I was really into the 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 Sampara history and also a black and white movie or radio story and also how the movie they show the advertisement during that time they show. So I really interested in kind of vintage and old or photographs also. So and then I was I uh, more and more putting these messages through my painting. So so I make this little pie chart. Um, yes, a pie chart. Uh, um just as my personal uh my personal pie chart no uh, i have never done research or anything but i think all these myths um, included how to raise women and how to make fit as guilt since we were born and uh, according to my personal experience according to some of my friends that i created because a religion is really sensitive stuff in myanmar because a religion and um, the military, they use military as a, a weapon to keep their power and also to also to use um, to use the religion as the, uh, the to spread the propaganda message. So quite a long time, a lot of uh, even for Burmese people, uh, a lot of uh, messages, a lot of concept. We thought this is the culture or this is the tradition or this is religion It's really delicately twisted. Sometimes, you know, we have to remove one thing by thing. Yeah, this is religion, this is uh, culture, this is tradition and uh, sometimes it's too delightly 
twisted and connected to each other. So sometimes we don't even know what is the, the real source background. And uh, it's really sensitive and, um, and um, it's uh, also a danger that we put the religion here. And um, some people are using this as a, as a weapon to spread the message. And also we don't have a, a good education system and the society uh, connected from this education, the society and the way they think, the way they feel, the way they react started to change a long time. So these are the five things for me that I think is included in this measure, uh, in this measure. And also in Myanmar, since uh, quite a long time, it was never a peace in this country. Um, now I will most focus on my 2021 20, military coup because this is what I really experienced in my lifetime. I wasn't born before uh, before that time. So, so yes, so we already have um, the the other coup before and my 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 the earlier generations, my parent time, my grandmom time, they used to have this ASP run. So I explain you this because all the bombings people, we were bravely fighting what is happening right now. But for quite a long time, we were used to and we were trained and put in the frame to live under the fear. So we all have a fear. Sometimes we don't. We tell that, yeah, we love them. We don't like the military. We want to fight it. But for quite a long time, the way we think in our brain, the way they give the messages is how to live in the fears uh, is you know it's really inside it. even me you know sometimes i say yeah i feel i have to do that but sometimes at some point inside we all see it we all experience it how to live under the fear so i understand some of the younger generation and also even a uh, older generation how much they have to fight after they see all the horrible thing after they used to live under the fear and now they have to fight to overcome this fear so so this is all exit inside all of the bombings people like uh, the fear so we used to um has a kind of a free time let's say like a, the open up time a democracy time wherever you name is very short it's maybe depending on the perspective some people will say five years some people will say 10 years but not uh, not a lot even for these days of the the freedom this taste of the democracy and we 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 have the the light in the darkness and uh, and then we were for following this light so yes so this is also a really connected uh the the female equality in Myanmar because what ruling in Myanmar they are as the military and the military are the male leading um, uh, groups so they are putting using all the the messages what they can put the the women in a, a second part so you know half of the populations are already in the middle and they don't need to think about it so they just have to fix for the other half so for them it's also easier to 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 keep the power so and so now we are fighting for the the military but not only their position also all the concept that they used to be for quite a long time in this country before so this is also our target and it's also really connected even a, a single a daily things uh, like a, a laundry and a fabric and i started to use this uh, a fabric um maybe 2012 I started to use a, uh, a fabric as a background 2012 and at this time uh, not a lot of people support it, not a lot of people, not a lot of people have an open mind uh, uh, like now. So even some people, they are not there to come and look at the exhibition and uh, one guy, he bought a painting with the fabric background and he asked someone to deliver it and the delivery guy he said oh my god this is the, the laundry fabric should i touch it or should i remove it so i still remember he was struggling how to move this painting to the to this the to the the guy who's uh, collected so um, yeah so it was a uh, one memory about the exhibition and that so that is the baggage number one so let's go to the baggage number two uh, baggage number two is also in the streets because um everything 
what I talk about and everything has changed uh, since February 1st because the coup has happened and I wasn't expected and a lot of people was I wasn't expected um, and I was more my creations were, were more focused on the uh, the the, the politic and also to represent on the elections and also um, to describe how people are feeling, how people are struggling and facing and uh, facing uh, after this moment. And uh, and at this time, um, I wasn't in my hometown. I was in Yangon, the biggest uh, city in Myanmar, and I didn't have a lot of friends. So at this time, I was. Um, I was uh, I wasn't know which group to try to demonstrate because at this day, 50 million people they went out on the street to demonstrate and to spread their voices. Uh, when the military they took the 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 power, and we all feel that it wasn't fair because we voted is uh, winded. Um, it's really. Um, the difference is really um, di can see the the difference um, that uh, and um, and I wanted to demonstrate on the street as a simple as the other people and then I walk in the streets and I was looking for a group to demonstrate and and at this time I noticed that I just left home and I have nothing to demonstrate I want to hold a poster so I said okay I want to write a poster and to draw a groups. Uh, before I draw the group, so I went to the painting store and I um, and I bought the equipment and I wrote a poster in front of it. Um, in front of, and um, some people they arrived. Ah, oh, you're writing a poster and you have uh, some few paper extra. So can I have one? Can you write one for for me? So 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 I said yes, of course I can write it for you. So what do you want to write? And I wrote what he wanted to write and I gave it. Since the first poster I gave it is has never stopped and uh, many people arrived, arrived and then they asked, they asked, they asked and until that uh, all the equipment is finished and then the whole day I has been sitting and writing a poster and then I noticed maybe this is how the artists can participate during the protest and this, maybe this is what we can, can provide to the people then that um, that in the groups and demonstrate the demonstrating so and also a lot of people they they want this part and they also want uh, this uh, poster so uh, i started to wrote it and also at the same time uh, like me the another a young artist groups not far away from me they were doing a poster writing so at the end of the day we started to talk uh, together and okay let's do together the next day we're gonna meet here again we're gonna do it again and it's just like randomly the rifle right has started in this way and we post on social media, it was spreading. So all the young people who are interested in art and drawing, so they said, we want to draw, we want to write it, we want to make it. So uh, a, a lot of poster were was really beautiful, not only uh, a text, sometimes we put a little drawing as they want. And what we do is simple. We just have a two or three color and brush and white paper, and we just sit on the, the next to the, the street and uh, people, come and ask what they want to tell. So it's really interesting because every day we are participating in the protest and um, we don't write what the message or what we want to give to the people and the people they ask what they want to hold. And depending on the situation and depending on the day, the way and the text what the people ask for us to write is changing. So we were really following the voice of the people what they wanted to write. and. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a really interesting and at the end of the day we only talk with the friends yeah what is the the writing for you uh, today and then it's really interesting and uh, sometimes we we talk and um, um and um once i text i wrote something uh, the text that no one asked me before and i wrote uh, a text that from the from the last week, you know, like a quote or the the the, the word from the last week, and I try to give to uh, people, yeah, to hold it, to hold it, and they won't want to take it. You know, they just want to write what they want to sell and uh, what they want to say, and it's really a changing depending on the move and then depending on the uh, on the days. And um, I'm glad that experience that I 
has the chance to listen more to the voice ed, and this is the right for right writing poster. Another one is like in the photo, uh, separately in the evening and or when we have a day off. I was holding the, I make a, a painting and I was holding on the street and the painting and asking the people, write everything what you want to say and what you want to change or something you feel what is not right right now and you want to change something right and so a lot of people they 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 write it with their hands writing on this uh, on this painting and depending on the time this is also the same some people they put the the date and the 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 depending on the situation and once i remember it was a february 14 so it was a valentine day so one painting that i asked people to write is also really interesting because you can see this is valentine day and some people they wrote happy valentine day and also a political movement included so the the text um and the different ages from the people from the different background the just i'm glad this painting there's just so beautiful with the hundreds of people they participated and it became a, the, a beautiful a beautiful work after so that was the that that was the 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 during the after the coup and i was quite um and also i have another movement like making a painting and selling it and supporting to the people with this money so as uh, one day, uh, uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, one day we still don't know why. What is the reason? The military they arrived to our building, and maybe 11 p.m. at night, and maybe nine people, ten military, ten policemen with a gun. They they knock in front of my door and they. They started to make a uh, intimate questions and um, and they left. And these moments really shocked me because before this moment, I never wanted to leave the country. Um, but starting from that moment, I deleted all my social media as just right, just standing there and uh, all the social media that we make a groups and to make the poster and I deleted that page and also and I realized and I checked my apartment any evidence and a lot in my apartment a lot so if I was lucky they didn't enter to the apartment and um, if they entered it I don't think I would be talking in front of you today and I don't know what going to be my position um right now so and then i talk a lot of friends and who know my situation and i talk and they said it's gonna be a matter of time it won't be safe and it won't be the first time um they come so maybe you should think about it and still you know i was telling myself i don't want to leave the country i don't want to leave the country because what i want to be in the country the most this is the time so and uh, but one day my friend um, he also have a um, has a similar situation like me and he said Chu, you should start to think about it maybe there is a reason that what you can do more outside the country and um, and now and when he told to me the situation is getting tighter and tighter in the street we cannot do the 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 poster the situation is starting to be really violent and the killing and dying have started so um me i cannot run the <laughs> very first and i was uh, i don't know that you can see or not i'm a little bit short and most of the time i was sitting in the the rooms and painting so i'm not a really you know spotted spotted person so um so fighting is not uh, it's not uh, not for me at this time maybe i if i train possible but i have to train a lot and uh, so um so and uh, so very shortly uh, what is happened at this night and um, maybe after one week or 10 day i left the country and i arrived in europe so outside europe so yeah this is the like baggage that i carry with me outside europe um so in the in the baggage that i carry from myanmar i have the the guilt 
of uh, leaving the friends and family inside because I'm alone, so right here, everyone I know, they're still there. All my family, they're still there to right now when I'm talking about it. And I have no friends and nothing outside Myanmar. And I've tried so hard to be a young artist, a female artist, and I try so hard. I give all of my years for that 10 year and I have to leave it behind. And at this time I was, uh, planning to build my studio in Yangon, but my dream, I have to let it go. Even that I started a little bit, I lost uh, for the first investment for building a studio in Yangon. And when I arrived in Europe um, and I have this all of the mental problems and then the, the depression problems, but at the same time inside me, I still bring in together with the, the resistance or the Bami people feel the resistance that we want to that we want to show that we have to resist even though that we don't have a strong background we don't have a strong economy but we have to keep the resistance i still have this and we have hope and for two or three months i couldn't do anything because i was feeling depressed and um, but at some point i was telling myself maybe to don't try yourself maybe try look at to your friends and family and look at to the people that you care and do something for them and from this moment i started to do a small small and then i could keep moving on the life um, and without this thought i will never ever make what i have done before and and also the positive the positive energy of the Burmese people I bring together with me in my baggage and they gave me energy to keep going on. So this is the first uh, performance that I did in front of the Louvre and um, I started to give um, messages to the world and also um, for me I'm feeling giving the, the messages is important also for Myanmar to get help and also to know the saturation so we have a lot of opportunities uh, options and opportunity to have Myanmar and in front of the loop I remember it was my first time and after 30 minutes and a lot of people interested in the board and they saw Myanmar at this time it was on the news so some people they asked what is the happening there the situation and then suddenly the security arrived and they said move move so I was so scared and then it's my first time in France just I just arrived and how about because of the copyright and how about is there is there any law you know how about if they kick me up from the country you know I was scared but I kept a uh, second time <laughs> anyway so these are I kept doing it so I tried every every protest that I can do and also the artwork um, because I well all I can do is uh, creating the artwork so if I have the event whether it's the political event or creative artistic event I try to tell about Myanmar and also if there is no event, I go on the street and I do something to give the message to the people. And when I have a chance to talk like today where the people listen to the story, I give the information, I give the message because at this time, when the, the beginning time, the whole world is talking about it, Myanmar, but now after two years, it's almost forget and now everyone's uh, almost forget yeah in Myanmar what is happening everything is finished actually it's not finished it's even getting uh, worse and worse every day so that was the the sum of my um, interesting the movement and artistically alone with the friends with the groups and uh, and I as the package number two yeah and uh, there are some artwork after a few months after I left Myanmar, there because of some hour that I created even outside Myanmar, the military they put an act of fine on me, and then I was so scared because my family is still there, and for the same reason I wanted to hide my information a bit, and I wanted to move somewhere news. Um, I still remember at this time I'm here and. Everything I have done, I can take the responsibility, but I don't want someone I left take the responsibility of what I did and what I believe. So at some point, for some reason, I moved to Kiev, Ukraine, 
And this is baggage number three. <laughs> So my connection with Kiev and Ukraine is um, I have the experience with the Kiev when I want when I visited there I left the city and I interested uh, the culture and then the attitude the atmosphere of the city and for me Ukraine is uh, quite far from from Myanmar but I found a lot of similarity when I was there and um, and this is the second time with this one year and two times that I face the people who use their power to make other people suffer. Um, so this is the I really now for me, you know, I for for me personally, I don't like or I don't find it anyone who's used the power instead of making other people good and to suffer. This is the second time I face too much. I hope not to face anything again in my life. Um, so I moved to to Kiev and I really feel that I'm going to stay there for two years. And I run a, a place and I started to do a bit of studio. And when I left the country, I didn't bring a lot of money. So in Kiev, I have some little left. So I use all of this money to invest this little studio I bought painting uh, and equipment and I was so happy because it's much cheaper than Paris and France and in, in, in other parts of Europe so I really sat and even started to paint a lot of uh, series there and I feel a lot of um, the the common thing the Ukrainian people and Myanmar people what I found is the fabric and they also have a, a traditional costume, a traditional culture, and we can see it in the tourist street, uh, tourist place and uh, restaurant and um, and the, the where they can show what is the Ukrainian. It is quite similar to Myanmar and also they have a, a pride of being their nationality. This is what I can feel is really really close to Myanmar people and these things I don't find it the other part of the the the, the Europe like in France and Italy I don't see it a lot and in Ukraine I feel it and uh, I cannot tell their language and I cannot speak but I I find it really interesting and we have a um, um, so some inspiration that we can take to each other and some uh, interesting the cultural background. So this painting I created, uh, the painting that you're gonna see now, that I created in Kiev in my studios, with the color inspiration of the Orthodox Church, and it's also the church. The way they use the color is also a different. So I I use um, a, a lot of a color inspiration there. But uh, for but um, um, and also another thing, is all my political art painting and hour that I created uh, in, in, in Yangon in, uh, during the, the protest I brought to Ukraine with me in my studio and I was planning to make the exhibition in the future to show the world the real voices of the people and, um, and at some point I was invited to to uh, Luxembourg for the exhibition and I took the trip with a one luggage and then, and at this time I was a um, extending my visa for Ukraine and um, and at this moment when I was traveling the world happened so I couldn't go back to my studio everything was this was uh, there since I left to uh, take the trip so me again with the luggage and I have to start a new life again for the second time <laughs> I, uh, uh, I don't know, it's the second time or third time. Yes, so, and everyone telling me, like, Chu, you're so lucky you're still alive. And, um, but, but uh, everything that I built, everything of the political painting, a new painting, everything in Kiev and they stack. But uh, I won't complain because at this time, what is happening there is war. It's not uh, something that we are facing every day. So the people lives and people feelings and emotions, uh, families are more important than the hour. For this hour, it was really part of the history of Myanmar. We can never go back this time of this protest in the street of Yangon. I know this, but um, these are objects. So, so I was, but I was uh, praying one day 
if I have a chance, I want to show these, uh, the handwriting of the people in the districts of uh, Myanmar. And uh, so just luckily, uh, a few of them, I think I might have uh, received it soon. And uh, two weeks ago, I received it, a few. So hope I will show it to the world one day. And um, this is uh, how I face a baggage number one and two and three. So after I left Myanmar today for the conclusion of the presentation, um, as the inspiring Myanmar project. So uh, what I want to tell is that also like inspiring Myanmar is like Myanmar is giving you a something to feel or like you know whatever you want to feel this name i want to give a little message from the myanmar it's like myanmar maybe is a poor country but the whole revolution uh, we is based on the donation and even people were so poor the population and what is we are fighting right now is most of them are based on the, uh, the donations of the ease of us so also the resistance of people and the resistance or even a middle class and low class wherever you name people in myanmar how much they gonna keep and keep this resistant even that they are poor and now economic situation is going down but the whole revolution has been on the donations and they are fighting and we didn't have a lot of support from outside uh, from Myanmar people to Myanmar people and they were tr trying to run this um, this um, the dream what they want to fight and the second theme is um, since we were born we were born with surrounded by a travel but Myanmar people if you've been there um you will know like people are always smiling and sometimes even me i'm surprised because some of my friends some of the young people they are suffering even the right now people from the big city or even in the forest people in the freelance they still can find a smile the reason to smile so this is i really admire and i hope this blood will always be inside me until i die and the three number three Third, uh, number three is the the education. I feel that education is really important, and it's myself a lot of problem when we have a better education. And even right now that we don't have a, a proper educations and good educations uh, during the revolution during the resistance the way the people they respond is very creative and uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, is really admiring so i hope in the future all of us or a majority of us has a, a proper a better education the country the future of the country might be is really really different to what is happening right now and the number four is now as i mentioned before we're a little bit forget and buying the world and also the social media and also for the international news you won't see it anymore about us but still uh, still all the problems are happening inside Myanmar and a lot of young people, old people, every generation are trying to participate in different way what they can participate and all of our hope is also for our better future and also for the other a gen a young generation for the future because we all want to feel that we up want to approve of the the position and also the also of the concepts and the, everything so we all uh still keep it on keep going on even though that we don't see it in the news so yes there is their presentations about uh me and also my artistic area and about Myanmar saturation and also my life, what I have faced. So I hope you have something from you. I um, thank you so much for listening. Well, wow, thank you so much you for for uh, sharing this with us. Um, it, it, I remember we discussed sort of this title of inspiring Myanmar and how for you it has this really uh, double meaning that of course you want your art to inspire the struggle in Myanmar but also how much you are given by this the resistance and and the, and the resilience of Myanmar people uh, going back to you so it's really really um, 
fascinating to to go through all your beautiful paintings and listen to your story. Uh, we will open up for responses and questions and comments. You can, as I said, you can use the chat function or uh, you can use the li little yellow hand and Eva will help uh, us getting organized. Um, I thought I'd just start off by one comment or, or maybe a question. So I, I think there was something you said early on that there has never been a day with peace in Myanmar. Yes. And it's that simple and that complicated, I think. How how do you think that affect people? What is it how does it affect artists and, and what does it mean when when war is part of everyday life? Like war is normal. And I think everyone who's been in at least those protected war zones, if you like, um it's not it's not everywhere all the time. So life goes on. People do normal things, but it's always there. And and how does that affect life in Myanmar and artistic life? And um, when there's never been peace, you talked about fear as well. Like there's always this fear in people. So I have to give you one example. Like uh, Spamese people, we are like uh, we was born as a blind people, you know. So we were just born this way and like blind we couldn't see what is light we couldn't see what is the color so for the daily life we work up we work we eat it's just uh, living the life but we don't know what is the light and what is the the color and for example someone who know the light someone know the colors this someone's arrived to use and you know the way that you're living is not right and uh, you shouldn't let the people who make you blind you should feel the color you should live way you should look at to the light and then the people will look at yes what is light what is the color and you we don't get it what you're talking maybe this is dangerous maybe it's gonna destroy our life it's the same so a lot of uh, people they are educated outside and they see the world and they see the color they see what is the light and they came back to Myanmar and they started to talk about people to change and you know you know this is light this is color this is beautiful apple apple has a red color it's so beautiful and the sunflower is yellow but uh people they don't really you know seem interested in because this is what they have never faced in their life and this is what they're not enjoying and i really feel because i'm telling you that because a lot of my life i was used to live in a big city and also a small city and when I, we talk about yangal and mandalay this city doesn't represent the rest of the country and Myanmar is quite far big enough and a lot of people who are still living in the small uh, city except this capital and a big city so I was one of them I was from there so you know when I was living in the big city I have the idea I want to change I want to change the whole society I want to make it good for all the girl I want you to know their value and equality and I went back to my my city, a small city. I talked to a grandma, I talked to auntie. Oh my God, I create a lot of argument and it's gonna take a lot of time. So I really hope um, education is really important for the next generation when we have a good, a proper education, a slowly, slowly, slowly uh, uh, with this mindset, I hope we will change it. And also now everyone has a, a fear and as I told you, at some point, Myanmar has a little bit of open time. So at this time, we have the light. We have saw that what is the color, what is the light, and now everything died again. So all of us together, we see what is light, and not even a fully well-grown, a bright light, but it was enough to see the color, and it was enough to see the light. And we all want this color back. We all this light back. And since we were born the way we used to live as a human it wasn't as we see as a, a proper human i really believe it of the hair care everything you know they didn't have the right a lot of people uh, they just living to eat and to work and to live so now they all feel this fear is not their daily life. This fear is the something they can remove from that. 
of course, during this process to remove this fear, even a bigger fear that we have to face. But after everything is clear, there's going to be a, um, a brighter future for all of us, also for the, uh, the next generation, not to suffer a fear like us and not to go back the same time as we woke up just to work and just to eat and not not a lot of difference. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say the essence of the meanings of being a human. So I want Myanmar people to feel the meanings of that we was born as the humans, and the essence of uh, humans and um, as and the, their rights. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really interesting what you said about um, the difference between between um, the city and the and the rural uh, areas and and a friend of mine from Afghanistan he says uh, you're not talking about Afghanistan Afghanistan is one thing Kabul is different that's Kabulistan that's completely different land it, you cannot compare so it, it's really interesting to to see your your comparison as well hey Kasia you have raised your hand and you have to unmute yourself <laughs> yes. True. Thank you so much for for sharing this with us. It's uh, I think you took us on a very personal journey of uh, of this conflict and the whole experience of of your different baggages that you've carried uh, with you throughout. So uh, yeah, very very powerful. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask you. I wonder how you creating. You've moved. You've moved between audiences now. You've moved from your uh, from the space where you were creating, as you said, with the people on the streets and, and being part of this incredibly strong movement um, uh, in Myanmar um, to the streets of uh, Paris, where you did your performances. Um, and I wonder how the audience in Paris reacted to your performances. How did people engage? with the artistic uh, messages, very political messages that we were bringing on the streets. And then how these messages also then moved to Kiev, which I find also fascinating how you found links to to uh, with people from Ukraine and from Kiev. And I, I'm not surprised, but <laughs> but uh, but how did they understand your your messages, your political messages? Did you use the same language, different language? How did you communicate? Yeah, so um, I did a lot of uh, performance and some artwork, some are mural, some are like uh, only at this moment I can give the messages. So I found uh, different people, a different reaction. This is what made this moment really beautiful when I was on the spot and uh, really interesting. I have one video um, I even put on the YouTube. The name is Searing seeing is believing and with a question mark so what you really see me is that you can believe or something like that and um, and um, and i was covering everything in white and i was giving a message from the text of the people from the street from the right for right and when i give it some people they receive it and they ask the question and when they hear the name Myanmar, some people they interested in and they read the text and you know in the text of course like uh, Myanmar, we want democracy and we want uh, i rewrote the people uh of the handwriting on my letters. So when people see Myanmar, they ask, yeah, how is the situation there? What is happening right now? So they're really interested in. And um, so so I explain uh, this situation. And also some people, they didn't even know where Myanmar is. And they don't know is the country or is the name or is in the even once we I have been told it was in America. <laughs> Myanmar is in America. So yeah, so it's really interesting. And some people they don't uh, they they don't know Myanmar and they just receive the letter and the text of the people who wrote on the street during the protest is really interesting and they want to know more about it. What is it? Why people wrote it? Where do you come from? And they don't know Myanmar, but they started to discover at this moment. And it's a really beautiful the way people react. And of course, also some people they don't want to take or they don't, they are not interested in, and they just watch. Uh, but it's uh, this is also make it beautiful, and we can see 
the the different lives and I was feeling when I watched this movie, uh, this film and this video and I still can feel how the different world and the life of the people at the same time it's right now, but it's really different. You know, depend on the country, depend on your government, depend on your where you're standing, the ground where you stand and the ASP run the way you face is really different. Maybe one part of the war is going to be fighting, suffering for food, and one part is like uh, taking a selfie and enjoying it, and one part is like uh, they have everything, but they want more, you know, so um, it's really showing the different lives of the people and also what are their background, and it's really interesting. It's made the yeah. There is a there's a beautiful question here from Nita Bor. How helpful has art been in unloading, unpacking your baggages? How helpful has art been? How has yeah. art helped you in unpacking the baggages that you brought with you? Yeah, you know, uh, before military coup, I was always doubted. You know, during the COVID especially, I was doubt is art is important thing or is art important? You know, I always doubt, yes, what I'm creating. Uh, I want to give the message. I want to change something. Yeah, but I use us as a medium. Is this uh, powerful enough? Is this what I'm doing is meaningful? I only doubt, especially during the COVID. And I and it's really helpful for the when you're watching the movie or when you're drawing, when you're alone in isolated situation. but is there any other meaning except that uh, art therapy or having a relax and finding yourself? But during the revolution, and I didn't notice when I check all the past and all the revolution in the world and also um, all the, the history and art is always involved in every revolution, in every moment, and even in the world, and the, all the logo, all the propaganda, I will just use art, but some are the good side of art and also a bad side of art. And also a lot of uh, developed country and a lot of powerful country in the world, they know the power of art. So when you want to dominate, de, uh, dominate the, the world, and um, now a day they use more and more art form and you know because I realized that if someone is pointing again on your head and giving you one message you have to believe it you have to believe it maybe you will resist it you will say no you know I will let I will die I won't accept this idea but when you use art and without you noticing yourself you're slowly slowly changing and accepting the concept and you didn't even realize it and I noticed it in Myanmar a military they use a lot of propaganda art we don't even realize it and they put slowly slowly a little bit in the daily life and um, that's why that we have a censorship and um, you know everything and um, and um, and when I left the country and I arrived here after a long time I'm a small little girl from a small town I'm not I'm, I'm nothing not important just a few words that I created outside Myanmar, far away from Myanmar, and they take action of that. So why? I make a question. Is at that time I asked why with a cry, and you know the whole body is shaking. Oh my God, my friends, family there, you know. And uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so why did that? Is uh, because these artwork has a power maybe to punch them or to make them move. So, and I realized that there is the power in art um, to participate in the movement because a single a poem and a single paint or painting, a single a drawing can raise all the unity of the people, can raise it and can wake up all of the people and to bring our unity. And uh, this is what I, what I learned during the revolution and how art participate get there and um, and also at the same time to go back to the questions and loading and unpacking the baggage and I don't think it can really help and pack because I noticed that I'm not the same girl who 
the same true before the military coup who was during the COVID and I wasn't the same the girl before the COVID so in COVID I changed a little bit and after the coup I think I have seen a lot I experienced a lot and the way I feel the way I see to the world even the way I treat the world that I use has changed so I don't think I can remove this from my life the experience because I have already seen it and um, the most difficult in life is also to forget. So to forget and you know not to memorize what we have seen. So, but to make it relief and to use it um, to help me to more appreciate in my life using art is help a lot. And now you know even a single moment and a single kind of from a friend or from someone and um, and I know life is short, really short. <laughs> and uh, even a single kindness is mean a lot to me and a small little moment is uh, become more meaningful than than before. You mentioned uh, earlier that you have this sense of guilt leaving the country in, in what we call the survivor guilt. And I think in our Inspire project, we work with a lot of exiled artists and I think all of them uh, have this same sense of survivor guilt, but, but that art also can help them personally as well as in their um, communication with, with their homeland. Um, I, want to, I want to ask you a little bit of different questions. Um, there was because there was a lot about a lot of talk about the creativity of the Myanmar protest movement in the first months after the coup. And you were very much part of that movement. Um, and back then there was this sense of hope, although everyone I think was anticipating or fearing for that military crackdown that they feared would happen. But but now when when that did happen and the violence has become so extreme and there's really no mercy and people but people still resist. And it's really remarkable how persistent that resistance is. But but the hope that was there in the early days, there's there's not so much space for that anymore. So what is what do you think is the role of art in this really extreme environment that we are seeing right now? when there's no room for that positive energy that we saw back then? Um, I, can you repeat the last sentence? I didn't <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying like, because what, what, what's the, what can the role um, of art be now when, when, when there's less space for that creativity, that passionate, hope, energy that was there a year and a half ago now the, now it's so much darker what yes. what role can art have in in this, this situation and how do you see that yes it's um you're right and um, the 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 beginning of the the melee when the coup happened when everyone started to 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 one out, one out on the streets. Um, we already have the experience. Um, the last time was in 90, uh, 1988. It wasn't that long ago. So we all here. We didn't experience in person, but we are here. So all at this time in 2021, everyone on the streets, when they started to walk on the streets, we already hear what can be the consequence how the military can respond because we already know what can happen next. We already have a lot of example. So everyone on the street at this day, they know what can happen to them, but they want out on the street anyway. And the same, the sometimes the history history repeat and it's quite similar it's happened the only difference is the internet and the society uh, internet and technology um, um, it's, uh, it's made, uh, quite different but still there are some so a commons that that happen again but all the violence all the political the the, the violence it was so uh, we all inside us we already hope we already know is might happen to you. So I really respect to the young kids and a young generation. They were taking a, 
as for the they were peaceful resistance and after that they started to to take care of the their region and what they can um, collect and um, sometimes you know you make a mistake because you don't know the mistake but what Myanmar people are doing is not a mistake and nothing what we are doing is the wrong but I give it as the example they do it even though they know what can happen to them what they are playing is a real fire it's not a toy you know it's like a it's not a fake bullet and once you make a mistake you can uh, vanish from the world and you can disappear and we all know this when i was on the street i have that fear too and i know it and like me also other people and they know this and uh, we all take this uh, responsibility and we keep moving on and the beginning um uh, because so no one think about uh, creating the artwork during the, the protest or revolution at the first time. I didn't think about it to create the art at all. I just wanted to keep the handwriting. I just wanted to them to speak, you know, because at the time they want to speak to the military. They want to express their voice and no one is listening. And maybe they are voice in the street. They scream, they scream after one hour their voice gonna be disappear unless you record it. But at least on the one hand writing, maybe I can keep it. I just want, what is their feeling? I just want to look at it. And also for the poster writing the same, I just want to write it down, maybe one text as well. It won't last forever, it's gonna last uh, five minutes, but also we participated. And when we say this art, it can be an art or it is not art or I don't, I'm not a critic, so I don't know what is the name, but this is this moment is the beautiful. And um, I know it's weird to say it's beautiful, but <laughs> it's uh, that we can still find a time of the beauty and the unity, even in the difficult situation. And the same um, now, the situation is more about violence. Some young people are taking the the military training and they are fighting but in the forest some are in the refugee camp some are away from their families all different situation but still the letter what they write to their family and you know like a, a photo that they are keeping with the bodies and maybe a single photo that they send to a parent sometimes this is the beauty of this moment and one day they can be um and uh, a beautiful artwork and and uh, what I found and I took uh, influence uh, of the resistance of the Burmese people and they use a two sentence or a poem as a famous poem from the 1960s and about the flower and they use the poem on the social media to fight the military who's using a gun and then uh, doing all the horrible and violence thing they use a single two sentence and the military they don't like it at all and so this is also you know people are really creative and this is also art and and another another example is uh, um, we call a flower strikes and you know at that day and everyone um, so we are so connected and they use a lot of flower in their hair and they are carrying a flower in the street so you see all the beautiful on that was from the street you know they are living together in the same street the same city with the military and the people who live in the city and they cannot fight uh, with the gang like the you know they cannot really express their um, their anger because uh, they are uh, and balance of the power and then the the weapon so but they still are trying to find a delicate way to express their vices and this is really beautiful and still this brain the energy and this bring the unity of the people and this kind of small little artwork and this kind of small little movement are bringing the people you know asking to keep resisting and not to forget about the revolution and uh, give up thank you that's uh, very beautiful um, and I, I, I just want to remind everyone that there's still time to come with a question or a remark if you want. I know there's some really interesting people watching, so I hope that you will engage with us. 
<laughs> Sorry, yeah. I, I cut you off, Jude. You want to say something? Yes, I want to ask the guest. I saw some people and I wanted to ask, is there any of you being to Myanmar and any good memory that you have faced and at this time? I think maybe when you're being to Myanmar, maybe not after the military coup. I hope so. What is the the memory when you think about Myanmar? I would love to know also. And while we're waiting for people to respond to that, um, can you, with what you were just explaining about how you sort of, I know that you're always uh, in a creative process, you're always thinking about new artwork and new expressions, but of course being where you are and, and being, you know, taken out of your normal environment, I know also it's very difficult to work, but can you share with us, what is it that you're working on right now? What are your sort of plans, artistic plans at the moment? Do you have any exhibitions or any uh, artwork that you want to, to create at the moment or working on? So the first, I really hope the, the painting with the handwriting and also some poster that I took uh, on the street, uh, I collected uh, when the people left it, um, one after they, they used the poster I collected on the street. So I really wish, hope, I really wish, and one day I will have a chance to show them to the world and I will find a place and who interested in about Myanmar and let me to show that. This one I hope. For the painting and the creations, um, 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 you know, when we talk about Myanmar and we talk about killing a military coup and also all the horrible things. And as for I did, these are where it's really obvious about revolution. But and then slightly, you know, the beauty of the creativity of the people during the, the revolution, some are not really obvious, but this can uh, this these also give me inspiration. And also when I'm away from home, when I look back to home and I see a lot of uh, important things that I like, and I think these are very unique, and I can see more the beauty of the country when I'm far away from home. So I really want to combine these uh, two, and now I'm trying to uh, create the hour that also are giving the, the beauty of the country, but from the a local perspective, not like a touristic perspective, and also the, the uh, beautiful moments, like a peaceful, like people's use the during the revolution, the way they 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 are very creative. So I want to combine these two. Wonderful. Valentina has a question. She's raised her hand. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Thank you very much for the um, for sharing. Hi. Um, uh, I, I'm a PhD candidate in, from anthropology and I'm working um, doing research in Bangladesh uh, with mainly uh, Rohingya uh, refugees and uh, I, I, I feel to be very lucky because I uh, witnessed so many um, wonderful um, artists also in the camp context, in a different context, but um, I was recently thinking about how powerful art can be to resist, react and uh, go through an experience of exile. And today you, you show that in a brilliant way. Um, with uh, talking and with, uh, with some of the, of the women I've been working with, with Rohingya women, uh, they also um, mention a lot about tradition, how important it is to, um, for them to express tradition in arts, but also in their everyday life, how tradition is important to feel connected to their place of origin and to also show to other people who are not aware of, of their tradition about to share about their identity their experiences so i wanted to ask you what if mm, you ever thought about tradition in your work if you represent it how you represent it yeah so if you could expand on this i would be very interested and grateful 
Yes, I thought a lot about traditions and also uh, a lot, a lot. Actually, you, when I started to make the first series, the women series, and in Myanmar, what we've seen a lot in the newspaper, in journal and social media, with people talk about, especially we don't know what are the people. Sometimes they are major journalists, sometimes they are kind of, as I explained, the military who want to to show their power, keep their power and put in the, the half of the population like a second level doesn't enough to rule the country or, you know, not to compare to them. So we have quite long, long history since I was born. Everyone talk about culture. And what is really interesting is they said the women are who destroying the culture. And at the same time, the all the culture who creating this burden of the, the traditions. The women are the main one who's carrying this tradition. So it's so really interesting, you know, it's making me feel everyone is like, yeah, they are taking the, you know, the the foreign culture, wearing a short skirt, dyeing their hair in colors, and not wearing a traditional dress, and um, you know, um, saying that, but they don't they didn't look at themselves and at the same time the one who's building in the history mostly who's building what is the Myanmar a traditional it's the women's are the one who that they're carrying and the one who's building this uh, this tradition so i really interested in and um, and uh, I made a lot of uh, uh, artwork, especially like I'm uh, poking and like uh, teasing to the audience and people who criticize uh, a lot without looking themselves and forgetting and only pointing the finger to the, the, the to the lady. So in my hour, you know, I was creating completely contrary what they said and, you know, like questioning to the people and this is also a possible way, another way in a, uh, a dy dynamic way, and it's really um, interesting. And and uh, tradition, when we call a tradition, is a really a strong word, because in Myanmar, except in the a few big city, the rest of the country they are keeping is like the a standard and you know to giving the grade of the girls in their life so to have a, a good husband good life and it's really depend on the how much you follow the tradition how much you are a good girl so um yes and some girl in the small city uh, they want to follow their dream they want to show their value and who they are they wanted to you know they want to try it. um but a lot of them they get lost just following this rule to be a good girl of all the social society putting a uh, putting the you know making a rule in them so and uh, it's also it's really interesting one day everything is p4 and when i have more time i want to go by this source and and now i told you it's a tradition but sometimes it's a culture and it's a real tradition or a people they created kind of imagination culture but you know sometimes yes yeah you should like the a Burmese girl before like a 20 decades ago and you should keep their tradition so you know when i check the old newspaper and when i check this the old kind of a old book uh, from the last kingdom we call parapike kind of a book but on the leaves and i check um, it's not the same at all what they said the way they dress the way they express the women you know sometimes you know they're even a top class and only the blazer on the top and inside there is nothing of course they were in a serum but uh, it's a really interesting thing i think slightly when the time change the people they imagine it and then they think it's a, a true and no one really look back and uh, it's began a kind of a, a real tradition and also imagination tradition and plus kind of a propaganda tradition who put this message to brainwash for control the reason so it's uh, twisted and it's interesting to find the you know the the thread <laughs> excellent point excellent point i have two questions now one is from nikki and one is from kasia i wonder if you should ask nikki first since uh, you already had the word kasia and then we can might, maybe we can take both uh, both uh, in the same go 
So go ahead, Nikki. Good to see you, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Very, very um, inspiring uh, story and very uh, insightful. I mean, I, I you know, one uh, should talk about the traditional Buddhism. I recently, I've been uh, reviewing some of the uh, Buddhist uh, publication in the name of Buddhism, and I've seen how women are uh, address or uh, portray in the Buddhism is very interesting. Uh, for example, a kind of sexuality. So. Buddhism, or I mean, they, I mean, people in the Buddhism, they never blame themselves. I mean, the man, a kind of patriarchy, but they just blame the woman. So because of, I mean, they are taking meditation or they are having a supernatural power, or they can lose those power because of the woman attraction. So because of woman uh, attract attract to them something like that. but they never blame themselves uh, in, in the Buddhist uh, teaching so I feel like that these uh, traditional or I mean uh, socially construct norms and values uh, embedded in the Buddhism where the I mean their interpretation of Buddhism in in the I mean Burmese uh, Buddhism but actually I don't know I mean these are real uh, value taught by the Buddha but Whatever, I mean, patriarchy in the Buddhism, I mean, most of the religious scholars like men and most of them are men. And then they interpret these uh, uh, traditional values in the way that, I mean, this, uh, uh, the way of building the pat patriarchy uh, society within the religious uh, sphere. So, yeah, I support the uh, two uh, uh, a kind of, I mean, woman experience. So, and also these uh, and uh, uh, story, like how, I mean, religious uh, uh, interpretation, I mean, in, in the Buddhism uh, to treat the woman. I mean, most of the religious uh, scholars, they have done a lot, but they are, um, uh, how can I say, uh, interpretation of these value to undermine the woman existence within the Buddhism is uh, very interesting. So I think we need to deconstruct all these uh, 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 his religious and historical interpretation or tradition, like how women look like or should, I mean, so it, according to my experience in, in, in the past, like, uh, I mean, uh, so we say like women never go to the beer shop or beer uh, station to drink beer, uh, but right now, I mean, women drinking. So, religion or uh, I mean uh, society have uh, no uh, boundary so every culture every these things uh, are not uh, how can I say it's this is going everywhere so in the past we didn't have that kind of practice but right now we have it. so sometimes I mean the, the appearance of their wearing dress I mean so right now completely different in the hundred years ago how the women woman well so completely these are consistently changing so there's no uh, I mean culture like a traditional I mean the keep uh, I mean we keep uh, value in, in in the different will but not like a uh, how can I say, preserving culture, our culture tradition and uh, putting a uh, burden on women uh, is the total nonsense to me. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I, I really understand what you explained. It's in, really interesting. And um, I even, last week I even talked with uh, one of my friends, she's a female monk. And you know, in Myanmar, it's a, uh, the society when we donate because the month and uh, the female monk when we donate we donate uh, rice you know after cook we cook the rice to donate to the monk for the female monk we we don't cook we just give a, you know a grain of rice to donate and even this is a it's a um, we can see how people treat the difference and you know in, in Myanmar is the Buddhism country and Buddhism is really important things and and uh, uh, because um, it's also came from the history because uh, we didn't have a, a proper education so a lot of uh, monastery and they take uh, in the small town there was no school and nothing for the education a lot of young kids they went to the the monastery to learn how to write and how to read so especially it's uh, uh they don't have a text so they used the the text of the from 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 buddhism and also it's like the what B buddha say and we all 
sometimes we all know it, but depending on the monk, the idea is really uh, slightly, slightly different. And then and in Myanmar, uh, a lot of people, they could see it, but quite a long time. Um, and this is also uh, 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 the one, this is part. Another part is also the military, they been in the, in the country for so long and they have seen it. Um, not very educated country and uh, people what they really believe to to change their mind is the uh, the religion is really important and it's really easy way and they know that and also to and when you put a, a title and the religion not a lot of people ask a question you know if you create the artwork if you create a, a education people sometimes they why do you do this why do you do that you know what is the reason but when you put the end of the title of religions not a lot of people ask the question that they said obey 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 especially um yeah, um and also depend on the what what person that you follow for the ideology uh, for the for the idea, because in Myanmar, there are groups of people who want to control the power, and they are using every possible way to keep their power. This is very very dangerous. When they use the religion to keep their power, and they use religion as their shield, or maybe someone they were under the shield of the military. And we even have some um, humor and a story uh, that some military or soldier, and they switch from a human, uh, from a person to a, to a monk to spread the, the ideas. And, you know, you might hear have some uh, bad monk, but they don't care about what is Bo Buddhism, what is the ideology. They already have the strategy. The main reason why I began a monk is they have the regions and and um, is this uh, really work well? So when you're in front of the the someone who is, doesn't have a proper education and who is really religious in their life, they just live and work and eat, and this is enough life. And the more standing in front of you and giving a, maybe a one fake news and um, and inside the the mind of people the the one that they can trust and who gonna help them is the gods, you know, it's the monk, it's the the, the, the Buddha, so what they said. It is the agent of Buddha who is spreading the news, so they won't give a lot of, uh, make a lot of uh, a question back and they just follow it easily. So the religion in Myanmar at some point, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's really interesting and also depend on who's monk and what is the background of this monk is also interesting and also you know uh, the military all men the monk they choose all men and um their idea is the military they already yeah yeah we're ruling we're strong we're men we're taking care of the girls and they cannot take care of themselves and also the monk like yeah we're making you safe and the energy blah 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 and um, and also they have to their positive party and also the male leading party so uh, uh, the women's leading party so you know in their mind they have to show their power yes man better and you know already have to put the women and the on the um, a lower ground at the same time in their action in their word they have to say it, they have to exploit it you know, express it so it's also um um another the way that we are dealing with and I believe uh, a lot of young young generation they could see it for quite a long time uh, the uh, people are using a religion sometimes to create a conflict because it's so easy and uh, a lot of majority are following this so you know you just need to pick a one enemy against Buddhism and then they cannot follow because this is the majority and uh, also for the ruling part is the also to keep their their, their site is uh, also a, a safe ground because the may ru ruling part so um um but we could see it, a young generation so now we understand no religions conflict and also the main target there is only one that we have to remove it and 
and also their position and also the concept behind all the brainwash and slowly and um, when we have uh, our own a government um, who doesn't use a dangerous weapon for their to keep their power and uh, really someone who's thinking the bright future of the people and the country and I'm sure a lot of young people they will follow and um, we have already seen it a lot of mistake in the past and uh, with the proper educations I think it's gonna be a, a better but still uh, it's gonna be a long way. <laughs> Thank you, too. I th I'm afraid we're getting to the end of our time, but I think what you're saying now and with the responses from Nikki and others in the chat here, I think there's really, with the young people of Myanmar, there's really hope uh, down the line anyway. Uh, Kasia, do you want to come in very quickly with a point that you had? In fact, I was just going to, um, I had a question, but uh, I'll ask this question to Chu tomorrow. Yeah, uh, we'll keep, keep the conversation going. Exactly. But you uh, know, I just wanted to say, Marta, maybe you want to look at the chat. There was a question in Burmese uh, from uh, Sangbu. So I was wondering if she wanted to maybe ask this question directly to Chu. I cannot understand it, but yeah, uh, I don't know if it's a, it's a comment or a question either, but you can uh, see if this. So yeah, maybe. thank you, Sangbu. And um, she said a uh, very thank you and I even wanted to cry when I was listening and hope uh, you're good and well and also to keep walking on the road of revolution with art. And there's many such um, uh, gratitudes in the chat that I hope you will see too as well. Um, you, you, uh, you, you mentioned that there's never any good news from Myanmar and you wanted to ask people if sort of their, their good memories of Myanmar and I'll share one uh, good memory from Myanmar that was from my first trip to Myanmar and probably nine no like 20 more than 20 years ago and I, I and that was during the dictatorship but the most sort of freedom that I could feel in that moment was just sitting around with with old women on the street like old vendors and stuff and and they will give me Burmese green tea Jackery palm sugar candy and cheroot cigars, and it was a wonderful time. And 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 there's this, this duality of dictatorship and 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 fear, but also freedom and and happiness. So that was my good memory. <laughs> and then I'll give Eva the chance to um, remind us about the next seminar that we will have in the Inspire series. And I also encourage you to go visit our Inspire dot gallery platform, which is the internet website and platform of this project. So but thank you very much too for your time and thank you to everyone who came here. Thank you so much for all the beautiful messages. I I was reading them all and really appreciate for giving the time to listen to my story and also the journey of Myanmar and the people who was fighting for their hope in Myanmar and I and I and I thank you for all of you for that. Thank you so much, Chu, for this very interesting presentation. Our next uh, guest will be on October 13th, and it's Luis Carlos Tovar. He's a visual artist who circulates between France and Colombia, and he will be exploring his um, uh, exhibition that's called The Garden of My Father. So everybody stay tuned for more information about that coming up. Thank you, Chu. And thank you, Marta, as well. Thanks, everyone. So let's meet again in October.